Uh, well, uh, angiogenesis has been a big research field for, for several decades uh, by now. And uh, I guess when people started to look at angiogenesis and, uh, uh, and then also found at the same time that angiogenesis is a, sort of a crucial process for tumors to grow, then the field of anti-angiogenesis were growing because then, then many researchers uh, sort of suggested that, why, well, let's try to see if we can block angiogenesis and then we can block tumor growth. And in experimental mouse models, for example, this has very, been very effectful. Uh, however, it has been shown over the years that it, it's not as effectful in human beings. So uh, anti-angiogenic therapy now is a little bit, uh, I think, questioned uh, how effective can it be. So I think it's important to continue to do research to try and learn more about the antigenic process uh, in human cancer and also try to see if is it possible to combine blockade of antigenesis in tumors, for example, with other therapy methods. And that has been tried on several occasions and has been perhaps more potent. Uh, there are some, some other drawbacks of anti antigenic therapy in, when it comes to cancer. Then it was discovered some years ago that maybe if you treat, uh, if you try to block uh, new vessel growth, antigenesis, by anti antigenic molecules, you may uh, take away some of the vessels in the tumors. But uh, the secondary effect may be that the tumor cells become more invasive and that you may actually trigger an EMT process by taking away the blood vessels. So, and that's the difficulty when in cancer therapy, that the, the cancer cells, you, you may see them as sort of plastic cells and they are highly adaptable to different kind of environments. So if you change one thing, they may adapt to that and, and sort of start to behave in a different way. So therefore I personally think that People that are trying different th types of therapy and combining them might be very much more successful in the future.